from all the foods that you have known before. These are the top five foods that can fight all the diseases that caused by inflammation. Hi everyone, welcome back to our lovely channel Triple H, how to be happy and healthy. With me, Dr. Hans, as your nutritionist and working on functional medicine, now I'm gonna share you about the top five foods that can fight inflammation. So why? Because inflammation is like a, one of the top underlying cause of many diseases. Let's say if you ever heard about like the disease that like uh, end with itis, like uh, tendonitis, bursitis, sinusitis, osteoarthritis, or any kind of diseases that end with itis caused by inflammation. But before that, I want to tell you first about like uh, what is the inflammation definition. So what is inflammation? Because like uh, we heard it like uh, so many times, but maybe you have no like uh, you ever know about like uh, what is really inflammation is. So inflammation actually it's a good thing at the beginning. So it's like a body natural response toward injury or infection that we had. So it could be like a infection by like a bacteria, viruses, or anything, especially what we put in our mouth every day. Yes, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. So it's involved like a immune cells, like a blood vessel and molecular mediators, such as like a interleukins, like a, uh, any kind of like what you call like a, in like a cytokine and anything. So this is like uh, the things that like uh, quite complicated, but I will make it simple to you. If you talk about like uh, inflammation, what is the symptom? How do we know that like uh, we got inflammation? So here's the five symptoms, like the uh, basic symptoms that we learn in a medical school, like every, every doctor know about it. So here is the symptoms. First is like a redness. So if you got like a redness in your, in your skin, like uh, in your blood vessel, but you couldn't see it, like uh, unless you do like a MRI and etc. So you will see the redness, the different color in our skin or any any kind of our organs. Then it also like a uh, create swelling. So another word of swelling, it's like a tumor. So tumor is like a one of indicator of being like a, we have like a inflamed organ or inflamed tissue then also warm like a difference like a heat in our in our tissue in our skin it indicate that we got inflammation as well pain is the most common one let's say like what is the top selling medicine or drugs in our world it's like a anti-inflammatory drugs or maybe non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs because what people just want to like uh, alleviate the pain without like uh, solve the main cause or the root cause of that inflammation and also loss of function or we call it like a functio lesa like uh, we got like a let's say we got like a trauma we got like a injury we got like a fracture then we will lose the function temporarily right so if you talk about like uh, inflammation and we want to like uh, decrease inflammation, we, will, we want to control inflammation, inflammation because the chronic inflammation especially, it would like uh, create a lot of issue in our health. Before we know about like uh, what food that good for fight the inflammation, the first question that I want to ask you is about which one is more important. Avoid the bad things or maybe the bad food, or eat the good food. Please write in a comment below. Because like, uh, as I know, so far in my practice, like uh, there are many of my patients that ask me, Doc, what should I eat? What vitamin that I need to take to fight the inflammation, to give me like uh, more health? So everyone is like um, very focused on like a taking like a good supplement, taking like a thousand vitamins and stuff, but they forgot what they need to do at first is avoid the bad things. 
Why? Because if you if you keep doing the bad things, if you keep putting the bad food on your mouth, like however you take like a good stuff or good food, it will just like uh, diminish the good effect of the good food that you eat. And you need to know first about like uh, so what is the causes of inflammation, especially like uh, when we talk about like in general also food that i'm gonna share you about so the causes of inflammation there are many things and i will share you about the five causes the five top causes the first one is chronic infections or chronic injury like what i said at the beginning virus bacteria even the virus that like uh, in a dormant situation it will wait until your body is getting like a have like low immune like a weakened immune system and they will like a comes in a remission let's say like a epstein but epstein bar virus human papilloma virus what else like um covet like what we had before it also everything it could like a create like a remission when 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 our body is like a under stress or maybe in a malnutrition especially the nutrition that I will share to you. Like uh, there are some vital nutrition that really, really affected our immune system. The second causes of inflammation is gut damage. Yes, so this is like a very, very common causes like in any kind of chronic inflammation, especially such as like a ulcer in your gut, in your like uh, intestine in your stomach and also like a gastritis yeah again with itis it means like uh, the inflammation in your gastric and also ibs irritable bowel syndrome ibd and even leaky gut so yeah leaky gut is like uh, the hyper permeability uh, in our gut in our intestine and it will lead you to the autoimmune disease so people many many people just like I uh, say ah autoimmune is something that like uh, we couldn't we couldn't fix it but the fact autoimmune is like uh, there are many of autoimmune just let's say like a uh, lupus or maybe like a uh, ms or maybe like uh, ra rheumatoid arthritis especially like uh, anything that like uh, on any autoimmune that like uh, happen in the later of your life it causes because of what you put in your mouth that damage your gut so you have to really pay attention about like uh, what you put that it can like uh, lead to leaky gut and also like uh, can lead to autoimmune after all let's say some things that you need to really pay attention is especially like omega-6 food that high in omega-6 soy oil corn oil canola oil or any kind of like um, the vegetable oil that maybe it seems like a healthy food but unfortunately it's not then antibiotic it because it can wipe out the bacteria also the friendly bacteria in your gut gluten i think like uh, everyone like uh, ever heard about gluten even you don't have like a celiac disease high consumption of gluten can create and can like a trigger leaky gut will cause to autoimmune diseases as well so autoimmune actually is like uh, your antibody is like a uh, attack your self immune or yourself like uh, anything it can it can like uh, attack your like a uh, myelin it can attack your connective tissue it can attack your thyroid and etc so Gluten is like uh, the really the first substance or maybe the first ingredient that you need to pay attention if you have an autoimmune disease. Then ultra processed food and also sugar. I think those are, are obvious. Then what is the cause, the third cause of inflammation, which is like uh, allergies and food sensitivity. So allergies is everything like uh, that can create hypersensitivity in our body. So it involves protein such as like uh, immunoglobulin. So that's why you check like uh, IgE, IgG, IgM, but also not always allergies. 
if you have like um, if you de develop like a sensitivity such as like uh, the most common one is gluten sensitivity or maybe like uh, involves like enzyme like a uh, so it becomes like an intolerance such as the most common one is lactose intolerance or casein like an allergy because it casein is like a protein in milk so all of this can create inflammation if you keep eating that especially if you know it already so please if you have like a symptoms when you eat something please just stop it don't keep eating it even if, even though it's maybe like a, it pleasant you it can give you like a dopamine for five minutes please just stop it then the fourth causes of inflammation i think is the most common one is also hyperinsulinemia so hyperinsulinemia is like the high insulin in our blood as you know, insulin is like a, the, the first hormone, the only hormone that can suppress blood sugar. So why we have hyperinsulinemia? The simple answer, because like uh, you trigger blood sugar in your blood too many or too much. So what causes hyperinsulinemia? I'll share you the three biggest things. First is frequent eating. So. If you are like uh, eating like a uh, four times a day, five times a day, or even like a uh, six times a day, what I mean by eating is everything that you put in your mouth, not in not only eating like uh, a big meal, but also the small meals, chips, popcorns, biscuits, cookie, ice cream, or even fruits. Because many of my patients, how about fruits, dog? Well, it's still eating. I'm not saying that fruit is bad food, but if you keep eating like uh, you eat like a uh, five times a day with like a uh, fruit in between your meals it's still frequent eating the second thing obviously it's glucose or sugar so when i'm saying glucose or sugar is anything that will turn into glucose and sugar in our body especially carbs and also protein the high too much protein that you that you have in your diet and also insulin resistance itself it can cause like a uh, the bad effect why our body like a uh, develop insulin resistance because of hyperinsulinemia the insulin that we trigger like uh, again and again and again by frequent eating and anything that will turn into glucose or sugar in our body and the last thing that can cause inflammation the most common one is environmental toxin what is that environmental tax toxin i'm talking about gmo especially like if you want like if you want to know about the the most common one is like a corn soy it's like a very very abundant in our environment right now wheat especially as well like a, all the gmo it can create inflammation if we keep eating it not in once not twice but if you keep eating like a, in your daily basis it will create inflammation and also synthetic any kind of synthetic just to name it like a food chemicals like a preservatives food emulsifier food enhancer food stabilizer just name it even vitamin and fiber now there are like a too many synthetic vitamin food that has been fortified and also like a corn fiber like a, any kind of fiber that synthetic it will also cause inflammation if you keep eating it so now as my promise i will share you the top five foods that can fight all the inflammation especially the chronic inflammation that you have in your body in your whole life ready the first one is vitamin d yes vitamin d is like the natural corticosteroid or natural steroid that can suppress your cortisol because like uh, many people that have like a uh, high cortisol like a uh, over period of time it can cause like a uh, lack of cortisol just like insulin if we keep like a uh, triggering we will create like a uh, insulin resistance if you keep like a uh, spiking cortisol you are under stress you will have like a lack 
of cortisol in your body. So what you need to do is not taking the prednisone or maybe like another corticosteroid, but you what you have to do is take the natural one, which in the form of vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is like a, you can, you can have it in your like a whole food as well, like in a cod liver oil, salmon, sardines, egg, cheese, not the processed one, and also for you that like a being vegetarian or vegan, you can get it from mushroom. Even though vitamin D is not like uh, much in our food, I think it will be better if you take it like uh, from sunlight, sun exposure, especially if you are living in like uh, the two seasons country, but if you are living in a like, four seasons country, maybe in the winter, in fall, you can take like a vitamin D3 from supplement, but make sure you get the good one. Then the second nutrients that really important for you is zinc. Yes, zinc you can get it from red meat, oyster, nuts, and etc. Because zinc is really really important for your T cell. So T is stand off thymus gland. So this is like uh, the gland that like uh, the training camp for your all antibodies, especially their T cell. So it's really, really important when you have like a autoimmune and etc. because it will like a train your like a immune cell to become smarter. And also zinc, especially zinc carnosine, is very, very good for gut healing. The number three is omega-3. So omega-3, you can get it from like a seafood, any kind of seafood, especially the wild one, not the farm one, then egg, whole egg, not only the egg white, and also grass-fed meat. So the meat that comes from like a grass-fed, not grain-fed, they also have like a high omega-3 that you can intake. And also what you need to pay attention when you take like omega-3 from supplement, please find out the one that has like a higher EPA and DHA, not ALA, because ALA is like a, the least absorption, like or maybe like a, the least convert to EPA and DHA. Omega-3 is also like a really playing role in a, our T-cell and macrophages as well, which is like a, these two are really, really important in our immune system. The fourth food that you need to eat is about vitamin E, especially the tocotrienol form, not the tocopherol. What you can get from like a food is like a nuts, seeds, spinach, avocado, and also sunflower seeds. So those are the foods that really high and get like a good vitamin E for your immune system and also to fight inflammation. Because vitamin E is really, really important to protect your arterial walls because there are too many diseases that comes from like um, the, your damage in your arterial wall, then your cholesterol being there, then will it will like a uh, create plaque, it will create like uh, the damage in your in your heart and etc. So it's really, really important. And also vitamin E is the one vitamin that can preserve nitric oxide in your blood so it can relax your blood vessel it can like uh, make your blood vessel more flexible more, more elastic not that stiff and the last one list that you want to know about the food that really good for fighting inflammation it's like a herbs which is turmeric yes turmeric has like uh, the very potent antioxidant that called curcumin so it can like uh, inhibit cox2 and lipoxygenase which is these two are the enzyme that can cause like uh, inflammatory markers and also it can modulate your immune cell so immune cell is not it's not good if it's too high or too low and turmeric is like uh, just like vitamin d it can like uh, modulate your immune cells in your body especially when you like uh, experience the inflammation in your body and if you want to like uh, have like a more potent effect of anti-inflammation 
by taking turmeric take together with black pepper just a little bit just a pinch it will get create like a synergy for your turmeric anti-inflammatory effect so i hope like at these five foods you can apply it and don't forget process how you process it like how many that you need to take it's also important not only the type but also like um, the process and the amount of the things and you need to consult with your like healthcare providers with your physician with your nutritionist to get the best match for you i'm dr hans stay fit and stay healthy